Good morning, good morning. I hope you're safe and well because that is the most important thing. It's a bit chilly this morning, but it is autumn, so we should expect it. Anyway, um, today I wanted to point out something that you may have seen on the ECHA homepage, which is that they've brought in a second search function. Well, it looks like a second search function, but actually it's not quite the same as the chemical yeah. search function we're, we're all used to. Sorry about the dogs barking in the background. Wish down. We've got a lot of traffic this morning, so I'm trying to get this done earlier. Right, link to ECHA homepage. Uh, what you'll see is you've got the normal chemical search, and I'm just having a look just now. And then it says search for articles, but there's no box to search. You'll have to click on a button. And when you do that, it takes you to the skip database. And you might go, well, what's so wrong about that? And the answer is, well, nothing. Except, why do they make it look like it should have a search function when it isn't? Why is it underneath the existing chemical search function that we all know and love? And what in the name of all that's holy, as my late father would say, uh, is uh, the Skip database doing on the ECHO website anyway? Given that at the moment we have 4,286,758 entries in it, and it's only going to get larger. Isn't this really moving away from what ECHO should be dealing with? You know, is it really what we what we need from the European Chemicals Regulator to be getting involved in something that is essentially to do with waste management. Now, yeah, I understand the SCIP database is there because it's for things that have got SVHCs in them, but you're going to attract a completely different audience for it. Surely to goodness, it would have made more sense for it to be handled quite possibly by a different regulator, but at least on its own sobbing website and not to be brought in with the main ECHA website because we know it goes down. We know there are problems. We know that they can't manage the data successfully that they already have. Why are they doing this? Why are they adding more and more on? Are they so short of money that they feel they have to take on everything that, that they can kind of claim there's a chemicals input on? Because what worries me is that we have reached me we may may have gone past the echo website's peak usefulness we know there's a problem with um the uh, or there has been a problem with the links between the info card dreadful thing that it is and the um uh, cnl inventory we know that that the cnl inventory isn't necessarily picking up all of the reach dossier classifications which is something really vitally important if you're classifying um and we know that there have been outages and, and general problems recently. So, and that's before we even look at the quality in the, of data in the REACH dossiers and the fact that the quality of data in the CNL inventory is fairly rubbish because it's just someone's opinion and it can vary from sort of absolute rubbish to totally brilliant, um, quite often in this, <laughs> you know, for the same substance. Um, you know, shouldn't they really be focusing more on the technical aspects of it? Like, is this REACH dossier up to scratch? Is the classification correct based on the data they have? Have they done their job properly? But no, they're going hell for leather for quantity rather than quality. Hmm. And at the same time, they have the source to say, oh, this is the biggest chemical database in the world. Yes, but it's not as good as it might be. And it's not as helpful as it might be. And the way things are going, it's not going to be as usable or as searchable as it was. So, Eka, please get your act together, guys. Right, rant of the day over. <laughs> Time for some uh, final freedom of speech reasons to be cheerful from Roy Chubby Brown. And the first one I've got for you is a, a shorter clip called Fifty Shades of Brown. Oh, dearie me. This is not for the faint hearty, hearted at all. I'm just putting the link below this video now. And the other one, if you are a real Chubby Brown fan, it's a complete show from the 1980s. So therefore, before political correctness was really a thing. Again, watch at your own risk very much. Um, it's been really interesting um, doing this, put, put, putting the uh, Roy Chubby Brown links in. You know, one of my newsletter readers sent me a, <laughs> an email of congratulations saying it's very brave of you because they, you know, he likes it, but it's not to everybody's taste. And sure enough, uh, I did have somebody who, who complained about it and said it wasn't funny. That's not true. He is funny. 
He's just very filthy and crude at the same time. Hey ho. Uh, right, that's it for me for the day uh, and indeed for the week. Have a lovely weekend, uh, whatever the weather's doing in your parts. Stay safe and well, and I hope to chat to you again on Monday. Take care of yourselves.